This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. All right, let's get through some of the recent news coming out of Brown's camp. If I sound a little different or if I don't sound like I have my usual energy, that is because I am fighting through um, having COVID right now. Uh, I got it a couple, well, not a couple days ago this morning. So that is why I might sound or appear different. I'm doing fine. I'm not really hurting that bad uh, but it does affect my voice it's really sore right now um, and that affects how much volume and enthusiasm i can give to you so don't think i'm not enthusiastic right now um i'm just working through covid all right so let's talk about some news about the browns first preseason game kevin stefanski uh went to the podium today and said the select starters will play in this preseason game but deshaun watson will not be one of them um this is kind of expected deshaun watson didn't play in the first preseason game last year the only time he did play in the first preseason game was right before his suspension in 2022 when it was the only opportunity to possibly play him um, in the preseason. So nothing surprising there. Even if Deshaun Watson did not, was not coming off of this shoulder injury, um, he probably wouldn't have played here. Jameis Winston will play. Probably going to see Tyler Huntley. Definitely going to see DTR um, in this game. And of course, you're going to see me streaming this game on Saturday while the Browns play the Packers. We know that Jordan Love's going to be in there, so we are going to see some of the first team Packers offense go up against the Browns defense. We don't know how many starters are going to play on defense, given that a lot of them are hurt, right? Zadarius Smith, JOK just came back to practice. Um, some of the corners have been in and out, and the same thing with the defensive line. We know Miles Garrett is not likely to play in this one. Zadarius Smith, another one who's who might play, actually. He played a lot last year in the preseason, so he might play um, in a preseason game this year. But we'll talk about Zadarius Smith later in this one. But I expect a pretty skeleton crew, maybe some starters in the secondary on seven on seven um, in the defensive side and then select starters along the offense. So maybe a little bit of Jerry Judy, um, but I don't expect like a Maury Cooper or anybody to be in there. And who knows if this Brandon Ayuk situation is going on, it might raise some flags about who does and does not play in the preseason um, on Saturday for all the teams involved. But as of right now, this is what we know. Um, and it brings up a couple of questions with the Browns preseason, given that this is one of the more odd structures that the Browns are going to have to deal with. Um, the Browns have this week against the Green Bay Packers, their first preseason game. This one's pretty usual. Then they have the joint practice against Minnesota. So we know what's going on there. It's going to be normal. What's weird about the Browns preseason schedule is that they play at 10 o'clock against the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Usually the Browns use that third preseason game as an opportunity to play the starters. But that game is at 10 o'clock on the West Coast. I don't know if they're going to play their starters. That's a very awkward time to have to deal with. So maybe they shift to playing their starters a little bit against Minnesota, but usually during the joint practice week, they don't play their starters in the preseason game that follows the joint practice week. So we'll see what Kevin does with that. Um, if he sticks to what he's always done, they're going to play in that third preseason game, but that third preseason game being at 10 o'clock on the West Coast does change things, in my opinion, or does at least open the opportunity to change how the Browns go about this. Um, also, What's going to be Watson's preseason schedule? I think it's going to be the same as last year. I think he's going to play whenever the starters play. I think the starters are going to get some run during the preseason. I just don't know if it's going to be the second or third game. Um, and when that happens, I think Deshaun will play. And I think that would be a good thing. Um, you want Deshaun to really test that shoulder and get comfortable throwing that shoulder with well, using that shoulder in football games where he can be hit before he plays Micah Parsons and the Dallas Cowboys. You really want him to get comfortable there. So that's what's going on with the Browns preseason. Let's talk about Zadarius Smith because Zadarius Smith left practice a couple of days ago on the cart holding his knee 
it seemed like a non-contact knee injury. Boy, this was this was concerning when it happened, right? Um, it, it looked like a, a ACL tear or something like that from Zadarius Smith. He was carted off. Everybody was assuming the worst. Then we get news later on that day that it was a knee contusion. That's what they're looking at. Um, today, we got the official word from the Cleveland Browns. It's a knee bruise. It's not a big deal. He's not going to miss much time. So, whew, another bullet dodge. This is the second time that the Cleveland Browns have had somebody get carted off the field. Um, and in Deontay Foreman's case, got airlifted off the field. Um, and it turned out that they were okay. It's good news. But would love to hear that less people are getting carted off from Browns practice. Not really much the Cleveland Browns can do with that, but that is what we know. Zadarius Smith is okay. All right, let's talk about um, who's looking good in camp. Sean Watson looks good in camp so far. Everybody is saying pretty good things. He looks a little bit more decisive. He looks a little bit more comfortable. He looks like he should. That's good. That's great. It's important to remember, he looked good last year in camp, um, and he played fine last year when he was out there. I don't think the concern for most people who are honestly invested in the success of uh, the Cleveland Browns this year is about if Deshaun Watson can play. I think we all feel good about his ability to be able to play at least at a baseline level. It's a question of how good can he be above that baseline level and a question of if he can stay healthy. But I'm not surprised he looks good. He should look good. He's a three-time pro bowler under 30. He should look good in camp. Um, you know, it's about him staying healthy. It's about him putting together a season. That's really what we need to see at this point. Um, so nothing really concerned there. Cedric Tillman is having a great camp from what I hear. It's going really well for him. It's really good. We talked about Cedric Tillman being one of those guys who really needed a great camp performance. Um, and it looks like he's doing that this season. So good for him. Um, and who else is playing really well in camp right now? I hear great things about Michael Hall as well. Um, and a lot of people feel like he could push for some serious playing time. Um, to start the year, Michael Hall, very explosive player. Um, he's going to flash when you see him in the preseason game. Like, I promise that you'll see him and he will do something that will make you go, oh, my goodness, this dude's incredibly quick. He can flash. The problem with him is being consistent. Um, but that is everything that goes with the Browns camp. Let's talk about a Brandon Ayuk update. I'm going to start this update by saying, I don't think I'm going to follow this thing day to day anymore um, because it seems like the the day to day developments have stopped. Right. Here's what we know. The Browns are definitely an option on the table for Brandon Ayuk. If Brandon Ayuk wants to play in Cleveland, there is a deal there in place that is known and there is a framework and a contract uh, and then contract that's been worked out like. That is on the table for Brandon Ayuk if he wants to play here. We also know that something similar is true for Pittsburgh, even though it reports on what the compensation is very greatly and the sourcing on it's not great. The sourcing on a lot of this Pittsburgh stuff's not great, um, but it seems like the energy is there for Pittsburgh to be seriously involved in here. Um, and then there's San Francisco. New England is reportedly out. Last I've heard, uh, they said that they were out. They can't, they did. Brandon Ayuk did not want to work a long-term deal out with them. So they're out of the race. This is interesting because with New England being out, that means the price for Brandon Ayuk gets squeezed because New England was probably the one team willing to go crazy with compensation for Brandon Ayuk. The Browns and Steelers probably not going to go that crazy with compensation for Brandon Ayuk. Um, it's clear that the San Francisco 49ers prefer Cleveland's. Um, well, not clear. I want to say it's clear. It seems like the, the 49ers prefer the Browns package, but it also does not seem like Ayuk loves the contract offer that the Browns have floated out there with him. At this point, 
I don't know what Brandon Ayuk wants. There's been all kind of reports that he wants to be a commander or he wants to be a stealer. I just don't know how seriously to take those reports because, again, I can't really source where they're really coming from and if they're coming from a genuine place um, with Ayuk. Like, was he being serious when he said these things it doesn't seem like he was being serious when he said these things um so it, it's one of those situations where you're just kind of waiting on brandon Ayuk. i do think the more and more Ayuk narrows down the people who could possibly trade for him because he doesn't want to play there or doesn't want to sign there the more possible it is that a third option arises that not a lot of us has talked about. It's possible that he just stays in San Francisco because if San Francisco is not happy with the possible compensation for Brandon Ayuk, they really don't have much incentive to trade him, right? Like the only incentive to trade Brandon Ayuk is if what you can get is just as good as having Brandon Ayuk, plus you get assets in the future. What the Steelers have offered does not seem like it's in that range. I don't know what the Browns have offered, but what we're hearing from both doesn't feel like it's in that range. And if they are not happy with that, then it's possible that they go to Brandon Ayuk. And this is just me trying to get creative here about how things can get done. But they go to Brandon and Ayuk and say, hey, we will rework your deal, add a little bit of money to it and give you a no tag clause. A no tag clause means that the team cannot franchise tag you. So why this would be good for the 49ers is they get to have Brandon Ayuk for one more year, and that's better than trading him for lesser compensation, right? Getting Brandon Ayuk for one more year um, is just better than trading him for like Dan Moore in a third round pick or something like that, right? Like just wouldn't be worth it to not have Brandon Ayuk for what's been peddled out there. If you're Brandon Ayuk, I think this makes a ton of sense because you get to play out your deal and you'll make a lot more money in the long run if you hit the market in free agency um, next year and you can get 35, 38. I mean, you could get he could get 40 million in the open market. It can get as crazy as that. And you get to choose where you play with no um with no restrictions. So I think that would be something that would make sense for the 49ers to throw out there to kind of have a third option to get this done. It, it's like a nice little compromise, like, hey, we're not loving this compensation that we're getting from Pittsburgh. They seem like they're trying to lowball us. We're not gonna be lowballed. So we're just going to keep a hold of you. Um, and look, this is the San Francisco 49ers, the Cleveland Browns, and the Pittsburgh Steelers reportedly that are in this stalemate. And these are three front offices that don't blink. So this stalemate can go on forever. <laughs> like, literally, it can go on forever. We know that Andrew Barry does not blink. We know that Omar Khan and the Pittsburgh Steelers organization, not one to blink. And we know uh, that the 49ers, not one to blink. This is not a great situation uh, for pulling a lot of leverage or hoping somebody panics. I don't think anybody's going to panic. Um, and we'll see what the 49ers try to do to get around that. There was a report that dropped that Ayuk's going to take a couple of days to look all of this over. I would just wait if I were you to hear something about this. I would not try to follow this story day in and day out. I would just wait like, okay, we'll find out when we find out. Um, if you're asking me, I think Cleveland is a long shot for him to land here. I'm fine with that. I did a video on why I don't love the idea of paying a wide receiver that much money. Um, so I wasn't really banging the table for them to do this deal anyways. I think it'd be fine for now, but long-term you'd have some serious questions. Um, I would say Pittsburgh seems like the favorite, but that really means nothing right now. So we'll see what happens. Um, but that's the update with Brandon Hayuk. And that is the update from Browns News um, from today. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.